Good brother. If you were to walk into any mosque in America and you just laid your hands on the first person or the third person or the fifth person that you see, you realize that you're laying your hands on a Native American? There were only 8% of the slaves that came to America. So how is it that there are so many more people that they claim are black or African American? I think they got the numbers wrong because a lot of Native Americans are the ones that they're counting as black folks too. It's time history be redone. They written us out. You cannot talk about Indians in the past and don't pull Indians out that look like home here or that look like me. We was under the Darwin type theory where Darwin was trying to, uh, with, with uh, 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 eugenics, trying to create the perfect white race. And white people have to come to, to part with that. This stuff happened. Prior to that, there were no birth certificates, and he was a director up until uh, the 1940s, 1946, uh, until his death. But he was part of the eugenics movement, which is a movement about creating one race of people, which was white, and everything else was put in a pot, as Tina Marie would say, and stir it up and call it covered. And, but he went beyond board on that, wherein, uh, as far as first Americans are concerned, he changed birth certificates and marriage license. He even put out letters to census takers in 1930 that people such as myself that are first Americans and Native Americans that he considered us as being bastards, that we were just trying to be Indian to marry into the, into the white race. But basically, when he was the, the registrar uh, for the uh, Bureau of Vital Records, he changed the names of Indian people in Southampton County. Exactly. Their race from Indian to after to, to uh, the color or the color. It was, was referred to, to as color. And basically all the tribes in Virginia in the early 1900s were referred to as color. Look Only 5% of the slaves in this country from Africa. Yeah. Only 5% of the Africans were slaves in this country. 5%. And 95% were of free will people. But they don't tell you that. But they will tell you 5%. Now you got to figure out the rest for yourself. Yeah. Okay. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah, I said you said. In 1543, Hernandez de Soto and his Spanish conquistador army was met by a large nation of black Indians in North Louisiana near Monroe and the Ouachita River as the Spanish was trying to colonize Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, and the entire Gulf Coast. And that's just in North Louisiana that there was a, ho a whole bunch of black Indians. And that passage is found in the, the primitive black nations of America. And prior to Hernandez de Soto coming to Louisiana to colonize the Gulf Coast, he had arrived in Florida, off the coast of Florida, and automatically started warring with the Florida Indians, who was giving them hell the whole time. And the Soto had described the Florida Indians that he was at war with as being very large black Indians in an aspect different from those from the interior of North America because of their the, the climate that they lived in. Because of the human sun that they lived in, the complexion was, was very dark skinned and they had woolly hair. And that passage is found in the history of Hernando de Soto by Bernard Ship. Now, when you look at the Bird Papers, and you, you would read his diary on April the 7th, 1728, he actually visited our reservation in Jerusalem, Cortland, Virginia. Mm -hmm. And what's so interesting about that, he described how our people look. He said the young men came out and their faces were painted and they made all kinds of grotesque figures and they danced for him to the sound of a gore drum stretched tight with an animal skin. Then he said the young women came out and they were tall and shapely and dressed in their finery. Their hair was braided and they had, they had white and blue conch shells in their hair that hung like locks mm -hmm. and around their neck. And then they had wrapped around their body a match coat which was red and blue which is a shawl mm -hmm. that fitted loosely about their body that their mahogany skin shone through mm -hmm. then he but went he then he went let me get this point. he yeah, went on to, he went, went on to say that these these dark angels would make exceptional wives for the english planters and their dark skin would bleach out in two generations unquote that's a quote that he made so that was the whole goal people. was, was yeah. to, to try to to bleach out as they say yeah but it kind of tells you that, that first mm -hmm. americans were a rich brown people. In, in the
mess with my nationality, I'm Lenny Lenape. That means the real people. We got a language, you got a river, we got everything. I'll take you to my burial grounds, everywhere. You standing in my territory right now, right? If we went to Africa right now, everybody would bow down and kiss the ground and respect every deity in Kemet, in Africa, wherever you may be. But our people run around here and don't respect any of the indigenous histories, deities, or nothing, and they wonder why we're in such a bad position. They ask is America's first civilization, what you call civilization. And to turn around and to tell these youngsters and other people in America in particular that the black men were the first to build any type of civilization in the Americas will be disturbing to Americans. And so, let me ask you this, yes. e even if you're right, let's say you're right, what difference does it make? It makes a lot of difference. What kind of difference? It takes the inferiority complex out of the black man who felt that his only beginning and relationship here in this part of the world is that of slavery. Then it puts him in the driver's seat because, again, they don't tell you that there are man-made hills within the United States. They call them mounds. And they range from in the Midwest all the way down the eastern sea coast of the United States. And they found artifacts in them that are... Here you have the bottom of that article, A Chronology of Civilization. They start here with 1400, about the time of Christopher Columbus. They go over here to agriculture, the first agriculture ever in America, where they start digging and planting. Here you have Rome, 753 B.C. Here you have the pyramid, in, the work start on the Great Pyramid in Giza, that's 2575 BC. In the very end you have evidence of permanent mound building civilizations in Louisiana. All along the Mississippi River you will find people who came down here. This is the same way the United States Congress set up, correct? Yeah. Same way the Roman Senate is set up, correct? This is where we started democracy. We started government, civilization in North America. Next. Here's something they said. Let me break down the article for you right here. New evidence. This angel is worse than Satan. The Book of Enoch explained a group of fallen angels known as the Watchers, and what they did will shock you. There are 200 of these angels that fell, and here are a few of their names. Samyaza, Azazel, Armaros, Arakil, and Barakil. Now let me explain why these angels are so bad. Azazel taught mankind how to make weapons for war. This act alone resulted in chaos, even still to this day. But it gets far worse. The leader of these angels, Samyaza, is far worse than Satan himself. Here's why. Not only was Samyaza the one responsible for leading every fallen angel to sin, he also led a series of experiments with the other fallen angels. They created a series of twisted, disfigured beings with human DNA and animal DNA. This whole story is spoken about in the Book of Giants. It says the 200 angels chose animals on which to perform unnatural acts, including presumably humans. 